This is Radar from the Radar Tape Blog coming to another edition of MLB Observations for the Hot Stove Week 2 of the 2022 offseason. So first things first, congratulations to Aaron Judge and Paul Goldschmidt winning MVP. Some people thought maybe give it to Shohei Otani, but that's like the years they gave it to Mike Trout for being the best player. Like, no, that's not MVP. And it was really neck and neck, in my opinion, between Nolan there and I don't Paul Goldschmidt because the Dodgers won so many games and... The Cardinals weren't leading the division most of the year until the second half. And yeah, the Phillies just bumped into the playoffs. The Padres just got into the playoffs. And, you know, the Mets won 100 games. The Braves won 100 games. But they're like, yeah, those are the two that deserved it. Texas announced they're going to have the All-Star game in 2024 for those who want to go to that. Martin Maldonado, just off the World Series, it just had sports hernia surgery. He'll be good for spring training. They also announced that in spring training, Major League Baseball games will play exhibition games against World Baseball Classic team, which I think is cool if you're going to be facing off against your team. And Verlander and Sandy Alcantara basically unanimously with Cy Youngs. I have a little issue with that. I thought Dylan Cease was neck and neck with Verlander on most of the categories. So I wouldn't unanimously did it. And for the National League, Uli Orias and the, and, the, and the Verlander pitcher, I'm just like, yeah, Alcantara, every highlight I watched, this dude just dominated. It was his year. Uh, Tigers announced that hitting coaches are Mike Bradar, Keith Brokerar, James Rosen, and we previously announced Robin Lund as assistant hitting coach. So, AJ Hinch, second year on the job, giving a, basically a whole new staff. Bryce Harper, unfortunately, is going to have elbow surgery. Hopefully, he'll be fine. And the good thing in the National League of the DH, because if he has a hard time throwing people out and it won't affect his offense and swinging, then you can DH him, even though he got Schwarber and Cassianos in the outfield. That's a horrible offensive outfield. Uh, interesting news, Will Venable, after not getting a manager gig, decided to join Bruce Bochy in Texas. Now, Will Venable did play for Texas Rangers, so he knows some GM, Chris Young. He didn't play. He just he wasn't in San Diego when Bruce Bochy was there, but played against him. I like Will Venable. He's one of my favorite players. It's cool that he's he wants to be a manager, but you're the bench coach of the Red Sox. Both you and the Rangers were disappointing last year, really just jumping from one bad team to another. Baseball trades that actually happened. Kyle Lewis, former Rookie of the Year, who shouldn't have beat Luis Robert. That's another day, another time. Was traded for catcher outfielder Cooper Hummel. So the Mariners acquire an outfielder who's really a catcher. When they have like three, four catchers on the 40-man roster this year, and they have a gluttony of outfielders and infielders who play the outfield, so it's like a exchanging one for another. Kyle Lewis, though, can immediately help out the Diamondbacks and play center field or even play left field or right field because the Diamondbacks last year, as I mentioned, were playing Hummel in the outfield and they were playing Varsho in the outfield and playing, uh, what's his name? The, so yeah, they have Christian Walker at first base and Seth Beer, Pavin Smith. They were playing Pavin Smith. Yeah, I didn't have to look that up in the outfield. He's a first baseman. So they definitely need some real outfielders there. And speaking of the Mariners, they, they also were able to trade Kyle Lewis because they just acquired Tiaster Hernandez for Eric Swanson, who has been a reject and bounced between the team. That's not a big deal, but they get a pitching prospect, Blue Jays. I don't know what's wrong with the Blue Jays. You know, George Springer is a walking injury in center field. Guriel ended the year in this, on the injured list. Tiaster Hernandez was like one of the last men standing when it came to their outfield. Yeah, he had a down year, but the dude drove in 100 runs the previous year with an all-star. Seattle already has Jesse Winker. And we mentioned Julio Rodriguez and Jerry Klotenic and, and Tremel, And they played Dylan Moore in the outfield. And Haggerty. They got too many outfielders. So, again, shuffling the decks here. We're like, let's get a guy who used to be an all-star. And we'll give up a pitcher or two. That's where I'm like, it doesn't really help this team. And then manager of the year this year went to Terry Francona and Buck Showalter. Congratulations to them. I said the Mets won 100 games, made the playoffs, even though they blew the division lead. And the Cleveland Guardians won the division, even though no one thought they were. I was thinking more along to Baltimore or Toronto where the Orioles were better. John Schneider took the Blue Jays to the playoffs. Even Scott Servey took the Mariners to the playoffs. And in the National League, Rob Thompson who took the Phillies, Bob Melvin, you know, Oliver Marmol, the Cardinals. You know, I'm thinking more other options. And basically, Martin Perez and Jack Peterson were the only players to accept their offers and... And that's where I'm just a little bit confused because Jack Peterson had an all-star year. And if I had an all-star season, I would obviously, you know, want to 
I would obviously want to, you know, cash in on that. Martin Perez at an all-star season. I would want to, you know, capitalize on that as well. And uh, that's the thing where it's like, you know, that's where I would just be like, you know what? I want to... I want to be able to make a lot of money, but I'm guessing Perez, mostly being a ranger and injury pro, makes sense, guaranteed deal. Jack Peterson, I think he likes staying in San Francisco, but he could've got a multi-year deal, or maybe from the White Sox, okay? It obviously makes sense that Aaron Judge, Trey Turner, Xander Bogart, Stancy Swanson, Jacob Grand, Carl Rodon, Brandon Nimble, Wils Kutcher, Nathan Navaldi, Chris Bassett, Anthony Rizzo, and Tyler Anderson, they wanna make money. That's fine, because Tyler Anderson, guess what he did? He went to the Angels, signed a three-year deal, and this dude has bounced from team to team and only pitched the Dodgers had injuries this year. And he cashed in. The Angels again, after last year getting Thor, Michael Lorenzen, and it's just like, okay, they got all these starting pitchers and it didn't work out for the Angels. Is this going to work out? I don't know. It's a little bit fluky, this guy, because he doesn't have a track record of being good. And Rizzo signed a multi-year deal to stay with the Yankees, which makes sense. Because the Yankees are always going to have the money and the resources and be in the playoffs. They may not win it, but Rizzo... After being in the Cubs, who stunk for most of their, their existence, and then they won with him, I think he's decided that, you know, I like staying where I'm at in New York. So the Astros and anyone else who wanted them are not going to be able to get him. And the Yankees and Rangers won this thing they came out with this year with gold gloves for a whole team. Cardinals make sense. They got gold glovers all over the place in this roster. Goldschmidt, Arenado. And they gave it to, I think, Donovan or Gorman, the young infielder who played in the outfield as the utility award. You know, both the young and Edmund can win gold gloves. Molina is one of the greatest defensive catchers. Tyler O'Neill won gold gloves before, and so did Dylan Carlson. So it makes sense. Then the Yankees, not so much, with IKF at shortstop. DJ LeMayu playing out of position. Glaber Torres playing out of position. Then playing Mar Gonzalez and some young infielders in the outfield playing judge in center field. Like, I did not agree with that. The Mets hired Jeff Albers, director of hitting coach of hitting. And Carlos let him go up, and the Mets think he's good. And uh, Michael Harris, excuse me, <coughs> and Julio Rodriguez, both won Rookie of the Years. It was obvious Julio Rodriguez deserved it. Michael Harris, no one picked him at the beginning of the year, but he helped the Braves rebound from their bad first half to win the division. So that makes a lot of sense there. Seth Romero was cut based on DWI, so the Nationals moved on. Jason Hayward officially got cut by the Braves. I mean, excuse me, the Cubs. You know, a longtime outfielder with the Cubs. Never could hit, but he's a great defensive player, and they signed to all that money. I think they just want to move on and not have him on the roster. Paul Hoover is now officially the bench coach in Kansas City. Omar Lopez and Joe Espada are both staying when Dusty Baker staff because Espada didn't get to be a manager this offseason. Charles Cook and Bill Furkus are now the assistant GMs of the Astros as they're going to be looking for the new GM after the Astros said goodbye to the top two people in the front office. Matt Davidson's going to Japan, which makes sense. A guy who can hit a lot of home runs in the minor leagues, but that doesn't show it all the time in the major leagues, is what they want overseas. They want these guys who can excite them. Brent Rooker's gone to the A's. A's are not going anywhere, so might as well take a flyer on him. Mark Kolovsky was outrighted. Dylan Fife. Jordy Minn makes sense. He's going to KBO. This lament avoid arbitration. Nationals signed Derek Hill a minor league deal. They're not going anywhere. It makes sense. And uh, Nate Fisher signed a minor deal with the White Sox. I never heard of him, but okay. Sebastian Rivera was cut. Austin Davis signed a minor deal with the Astros for organizational debt. Anthony Goes, the one-time outfielder converted to pitcher, was designated for assignment. Eliezer Hernandez and Nick Neidhart and Jeff Brigham, Jose Devers, Lewin Davis were designated for assignment. Eliezer Hernandez pitched a lot of games to the Marlins. Neidhart is more recently. Brigham, I just got his car when he's a prospect. Jose Devers is, you know, Rafael Devers' brother. And Luan Diaz is the first baseman. So they've said goodbye to Isan Diaz and Luan Diaz, now the Marlins. Nolan Jones got traded to the Rockies for an infield prospect named Juan Brito. With Sam Hiller being traded the previous week, the Rockies just got another young outfielder. I don't know why Cleveland did that. They don't have a set outfield, but okay. Ryan Tapi and, and Bradley Zimmer were DFA'd by the Blue Jays after already getting rid of Tiasco Hernandez, so I don't know what they're doing in the outfield. Is George Springer going to have to field all uh, two-thirds of the outfield with Guriel? Makes no sense. Ryan Yarbrough pitched a lot of innings for Tampa Bay, no matter if it was an opener or a middle guy. He's got dfa which I don't get. Brewers added John Singleton to the 40-man roster. I don't get that. The dude was suspended for a bunch of games for drugs, and the Astros paid a lot of money. I don't know why that deserves a four-man roster spot. Jalen Garcia, Dom Nunes, Mervis, Viora, Jason Vossler, and Colton Walker were DFA'd by the Giants. It's weird because they just picked up 
the Viloria and Nunez off waivers. Maybe they're trying to maybe keep them and not have to pay guaranteed money. Vossler is an infielder where they play in the outfield, but he's a quad A guy. He doesn't hit well enough in the major leagues. And John Garcia's been around the block. Kyle Funkhauser, Miguel Diaz, and Brandon Davis are DFA'd by the Tigers. Funkhauser has pitched most most innings out of the played for most of these most out of these three guys, but he hasn't been healthy. Uh, Kiris Aquino, Jeff Hoffman, Art Warren, Derek Law, Jared Salmon, and Kyle Dowdy were DFA by the Reds. Hoffman, former Rocky starting pitcher, converted to reliever, got traded there. Not a big deal. Derek Law is one guy who bounced around between the team. The other ones, Art Warren and the others, barely play Major League Baseball. It's, it's curious that Aquino makes absolutely no sense. He's the only power threat this team had. I saw two games in person this year. This dude just crushed the ball. Like This dude is scary. I don't know why... They just said, eh, we don't need our best power hitter on our team. Giants acquired Brett Wisely from the Rays. Red Sox DFA, Jake Reed and Caleb Hamilton, guys you don't need. Diamondbacks picked up Carlos Vargas. Tyler Heineman, Jer Jeremy Beasley, Manny Buzzwave, and Junior Fernandez were DFA. Again, the Pirates don't need guys who are not gonna, who are not valuable enough to pay them guaranteed contracts. And Tigers acquired Steel Walker from the Rangers. Again, former White Sox prospect traded to the Rangers in that Lance Lynn deal. Tigers are just going to take a flyer on him because they also don't have a set outfield right now. Marlins acquired JT Chargos and Xavier Edwards for prospects. Chargos is bouncer on the block, but when he pitched in Tampa Bay, he was pretty good. So the Marlins are getting two relievers that the Rays just don't want to pay for. Jake Brent and Nate Wem and Brent Rooker for DFA for assignment. As I mentioned, Brent Rooker went to the A's because, again, these guys just bounced from team to team. Yadi Hernandez, Ty Romero, Evan Lee, and Jackson Trueholt have been DFA'd. Yadi Hernandez was a backup out for the Nationals, but the rest of them are just nobodies. Again, don't want to pay people guaranteed money, but Imelda Vargas got to avoid arbitration with the Nationals. They want to pay for him. Steven, Steven Writing has gone to the Mets. Miles Masturboni was traded to the Cubs for pitching prospect. Following in the footsteps of acquiring Zach McKistry at the deadline this year, the Cubs get another super utility player that's not going to help them out win, win the division. Guillermo Herrera, Williams Wood, and Silvio Brancho were DFA by the Braves. Herrera is a quad, out, a quad A outfielder. He's like a fifth or sixth outfielder. You only use him when you need to because he can't hit. And Brancho, Brancho's been around the block before. Braves acquired Dennis Santana and DFA Jackson Stevens. Dennis Santana has been an okay reliever of the Rangers, so that's good for them. But Tuki Toussaint, Rob Zanny, and Nash Walters are DFA by the Angels. Zanstany has been around the block. And Tuki Toussaint was a highly tutored prospect with the Diamondbacks, the Braves. And the Braves just stopped using him as a starter. The Angels used him somewhat. Someone should take a flyer on this guy. He's not like 35 years old. He's got potential. The Rays officially cut Brandon McKay. I guess they wanted to save money again, even though he's valuable. Kyle Garrick avoided arbitration, with, and so did Dalton Jeffries with his team. Now, I want to get to, to two things that also happened quickly. That Chuck Carr passed away, and Yasuo Puig probably is not going to ever play a game in Major League Baseball. I don't know if he's going to ever play professionally. But Chuck Carr passed away the other day at the age of 55. He led the league in stolen bases in 93, which was, again, known for speed and defense. He did finish with 144 stolen bases, way more than the 123 stolen bases, 13 home runs, 254 batting average. He did play for the Mets, Cardinals, Marlins, Brewers, and Astros. So I remember him as a speedy outfielder. And, yes, we pleaded, pleaded guilty in a gambling probe. For lying about illegal sports bets. And again, I don't know. This guy's fallen for grace. He was this great player coming out of Cuba. And then he had all the tools. But he never really would put all together. Dodgers were frustrated with him. So he bounced around the block a bit. And then playing overseas. But basically, he was lying to law enforcement about bets he made with a legal gambling operator. According to documents that were seized by the Department of Justice. He plays in Korea now. But he pleaded guilty one count of making false statements, a crime that carries a maximum sentence of five years of federal prison. He also agreed to pay a fine of at least 55000 I don't know where he gets that kind of money. And he supposedly was supposed to go to court on Tuesday. And according to his plea agreement, he, he you know, he placing bets on events in May 19th through a third party who worked for a legal gambling operation by Wayne Nix, a former minor league baseball player. He was By 2019, Puig was down money to gambling's business. After paying off his offices and rig Getting access to Nick's Central betting website, he placed 899 total bets on tennis, football, basketball, and games from July 19th for 2019 to December 29th, 19. They didn't reference that any bets were made on baseball. He, he played for the both teams in Ohio in 2000. He became a former free agent. Then he played in the Mexican League, and then obviously went to obviously went to South Korea. And in, in January, they interviewed him in the presence of his lawyer. 
and saying that he, he now lines with Federer after you're looking to the business. Now he plays the bet. So, yeah. It's one thing to do this through a legal site. That's one thing. Second is to lie. Now you're going to probably go to jail for five years and you're not probably ever going to come back to Major League Baseball. So, that's not good. They also announced that another former MLB player, Eric Kirsten Hiju, also pleaded guilty to two counts of subscribing to false tax returns. That was an agent for Nix's operation. And yeah, so all I can say though is recipes to Chuck Carr for every single move that happened in offseason, always check out the best research, which is MLBTradeRumors.com. That's where I get everything. I just want to say that. And yeah, I guess this is the end of Yasiel Purring's Major League Baseball career, especially if he goes to prison. Thank you for listening to week two of the 2022 offseason Hostel Edition. For the Radar Table Lock, I'm Radar. See you guys next time.